testing one, two, one, two. Hey, today let's talk about what's the best crank size for you. You know, I get questions all the time, direct messages, emails, messages from my clients. Hey, Greg, what's the best crank size? Man, listen, in this episode, we're going to talk about what's the best crank size. What are some of the secrets and guides that I use to help my clients and my Olympic medalists find the perfect crank size for them? And perhaps you may find some secrets that will enable you to find the correct crank size. And if so, wouldn't it be helpful? Stay tuned. Let's figure it out for you. All right, guys. Hey, welcome back to another edition of BMX Coach Live. I'm your host, three-time Olympic coach, Greg Romero. And man, I am so happy to be here with you guys again for another week looking at the chat already. People are already coming in. JP, Jack Baker, Jason P, Thunder Midget, a lion boy, he's coming back in. Man, if you guys are in the live chat, I'm really curious to know what is your inseam? What's your height? What's your inseam? And what crank size are you running? Because listen, it's all over the board, right? I really believe the key is figuring it out for you. Really, truly, it is a preference. It is a preference, especially for those that are racing a lot, right? You just didn't get into racing. You're a seasoned racer and you're racing a lot. That's where you wanna get into crank length optimization. Now. Not to be confused with gears. We'll talk about gears here in a moment and how it plays a role. But at the end of the day, what we want to try to do is we want to try to figure out what crank length is optimal for you. Not the gearing, the crank length, okay? So let's talk about a few things here. Let's just jump right into it, okay? Um, one thing I wanted to, you know, I was taking a shower before I got into the live show here today. I rode my bike earlier, did some cold plunging, sat, into a, sat in a cold plunge, at 42 degrees for 15 minutes. Man, that's crazy, right? Getting there, I'm getting there. And um, anyways, I started thinking about cranks. I started thinking about rotational speed. Like I, what are some of the things that people totally easily overlooked, whether you're a parent, a rider, a coach, it's rotational speed. Whatever that rotational speed is, the athlete, the rider, the racer needs to adapt to that. And here's the problem. When you get into crank sizes, you guys, don't understand that the longer the crank size, the more rotation is happening on the outside, right? If you if you imagine the crank spindle on the outside of a windmill, okay? Imagine a windmill, uh, I don't have any props, forgive me. Um, imagine a windmill rotating from the hub in the middle and you have the fan all the way out. If you were to measure the speed of that windmill, on the outside, that's going to be the fastest. If you were to ro if you were to measure the speed near the hub, it's actually going to be the slowest. So you have to think about the effect of one rotational speed on where it's easy and where it's hard, where it's faster and when it's slower. If it's faster, it's easier. If it's slower, it's harder. Hopefully that makes sense. So in other words, if you were to put out, let's just pick an even number, right? I, you know, and, and it's really hard because there's parents and parents of six, seven, eight year old riders here. And then there's, you know, guys that are 40 years old or that, that, have, been, that have mastered the sport and, you know, they can easily sprint at a top RPM cadence of like, let's say, I don't know, 180 or, or 170 something really high, right? Like BMXers are sprinters. Oh, remember we talked about that? You guys are very capable of sprinting at high cadences, all right? So as opposed to like a road biker, a road biker is gonna be typically a ride around 100. 100 RPM, that's the sweet spot. Give or take, it could be 85, it could be you know maybe 105, but 100 is a sweet spot. And I would say on average, it's probably more like 90. But a, B, but a BMXer, you know, you guys are, depending on how old you are, how much experience you have, your cadence is, your, your cadence ceiling, and we'll get to that here in a moment, your cadence ceiling is gonna be a little bit all over the place. So what we wanna do today is we wanna give you guys some parameters on figuring out what's the best crank length for you 
your experience and what kind of training that you do. Okay. And what are your goals in terms of getting around the track with the most optimal crank length? All right. We have a bunch of people chiming in already. Uh, people are talking about inseams. People are talking about crank lengths. Um, and people are talking about cadences. And this is great. Um, you guys keep it up. Keep it going. And I'll, I'll get back to you guys here in a moment. Thunder Midget says full pool, baby. Yeah, I found the shirt, man. I found the shirt. It's uh, yeah, this is a good one. I love it. Um, so rotational speed, rotational speed. I just want to make sure you guys fully understand the importance of imagining a windmill going around at one speed and then where it's measured, right? If you were to measure it at the very end, it's going to, re it's going to be faster. It's going to be easier. Think of a, think about a crank lever. If it's measured near the hub, then it's going to be slower. It's going to be harder. Okay. Now that we understand that, Let's just jump right into uh, the pros and cons, right? I want to talk about the pros and cons of long cranks first, okay? And then we'll get back to the short cranks. And then, you know, we'll compare both and we'll talk about gear charts and crank length charts here in a moment. I have some of those and I'm going to bring those up and we're going to have a laugh. Um, now, you know, first off, you know, one of the things I needed to talk about here um, was optimizing the crank that should be your goal right optimizing the length should be your goal right it's all about finding the proper leverage um, that and then also being able to complement that crank length in terms of your power and your leg speed not so much your inseam I mean you know there, there's a give and take on the inseam but um, you know the problem is is that the charts are they're all over the place I just looked at three charts and every single one of them were different I checked out BMX Ultra, I checked out USA BMX, and I checked out another one, I think it was like BMX Powers or something like that. And all of them were different when it came to my specific inseam. So really at the end of the day, those are just, they're basic general parameters, and, and that's fine, right? I think that's a good place to start, but I think there's more fine tuning, there's more optimization to be had here. And again, the goal should be to optimize uh, leverage, power, and leg speed. All right, leverage, power, and leg speed. I, I wish I had a chart for that, forgive me. Um, but let's move on. Longer cranks, right? The pros, really easy, okay? It's really easy, it's one thing. Um, the pro of a longer crank is it's easier to get out of the gate, especially on the first half crank. You have a lot more leverage to get into that first crank, okay? Um, and perhaps accelerating all to the first jump, all right? Perhaps accelerating to the first jump. After that, that's where the cons start to come into play. Right, things like, um, well, the crank, it's gonna feel like it's more of a straight up and down chop motion, okay? So imagine just going longer than what you have now. So when I'm talking to you, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm, I want you guys to think about a longer crank, say five millimeters in what you're running now. So for me, I run 177, that means I need to be running a 182, and what's the pros and cons to that? All right, that's how I, that's how I want you guys to be interpreting this. When I say a straight up chop and straight up and down chop motion, really that's kind of like how it feels. It feels like that. We always imagine in cycling that we want to do this nice, smooth, full 360 degree perfect circle. Listen, we don't even do that in road cycling and we're sitting down and we're able to actually slow the cadence down and be able to engage the hamstring and 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 scrape the bottom of the heel on the way up as you're going uh, as you're pressing down and extending through the top simultaneously okay you got this pulling and pushing and really at the end of the day um the faster you go on a road bike i have a pioneer power meter when i sprint on that it shows you the percentage efficiency honestly um i'm right around like 35% efficiency when I'm normally pedaling. And Pioneer claims that's pretty darn good. So there is no such thing as a 100% perfect circle. Now, when I'm sprinting, actually on my road bike, the efficiency percentages go up in the high 40s and low 50s, which is considered off the charts and excellent. So I don't want you guys to think that like, hey, you know, it's all about getting the full circle. No, that, throw that mindset out. At the end of the day, BMX sprinters, we're trying to Q 
kick and extend all the way through the hip, knee, and ankle joint. That triple extension, that's, what's, that's what the currency is when it comes to BMX sprinting and acceleration. All right, I want you guys to make sure you guys understand that. Um, the other con to a longer crank is that it, you may hit the pedal while pedaling out of turns, especially when you pedal out, pedal out of turns early. Okay, so that's something that you need to heed caution on. And then of course, it may feel like you're running out of gas due to due to the crank length taking too much energy to turn over. The crank length is making makes the gear feel easier. Okay, uh, the crank length takes more energy to get to keep up with the the rotational speed. Remember, we talked about the windmill. The rotational speed's faster. Okay, it's faster on the outside. So a longer crank. It's going to take more energy. You have to actually spin it faster. All right. Now we could get into like super technical bike fit type things like, oh, the cranks are really long and it's ro rotating my hips and whatnot. Okay. I think when it comes to longer cranks, older guys aren't really going to have that problem unless you start pedaling like, you know, 185s. However, you know, you get a, you get a kid who's like four foot eight and they're on like 175s, okay, they're gonna be really rocking up and down, right? They're looking like they're gonna be climbing up a ladder. And it looks like, you know, they're really, really chopping up and down, right? And you definitely want a little bit of, you wanna be able to have a smooth spin to where it's, it's efficient, right? You don't want it to be straight up and down. You want some efficiency, okay? Um, that is what I have for the pros and cons on the longer cranks. So let's move on to the shorter cranks. Let's talk about that. Now imagine again, whatever current crank size you guys are on right now, think, you know, five millimeters shorter, two and a half to five millimeters shorter than what you're running now. Here are the pros. It feels like you could pedal longer when you hit top speeds. You don't feel wound out, right? You feel like you have a little bit more meat under your feet. You don't feel like you're winding out. You also may feel like you could pedal over jumps easier, pedal manuals, more control. The leg speed isn't super high as opposed to the requirement of a longer crank. Okay. Then of course, it feels like you may use more of the stroke in applying pedal force, right? Because, or again, that, that analogy of the windmill, it's moving slower. So therefore, you feel like you can actually apply a little bit more force. It's not moving as fast, right? Think about it. A longer crank, when it goes, you have to go with it, right? You, it's hard for you to get on top of it and, be on, and stay on top of it. That's the problem with a longer crank. With a shorter crank, you're not going to have that problem. The con on the shorter crank is that you're going to feel under leverage coming out of the gate, right? It may take longer to accelerate compared to a longer crank. That's it. And then I got some side notes here. Too long, it's going to it's going to take some skill to not wind out the gear. Too short, it's going to take some strength to get on top of the gear. However, you will enjoy having some resistance under your feet. Again, I, I call that meat under your feet, right? Having, again, we're not talking about gears, but if, if you were to go up a, a Forget cranks. Let's talk about gears real quick. If you were to go from, I run a 44.16. If I were to go from a 44.16 to a 45.16, you know, it may feel harder for me to accelerate. But when I get going, my pedal cadence is slower and I feel like I'm getting more bang. This kind of came up with. Um, crank, light, crank lengths are very subjective. So let's, let's move on. Let's move quickly about that. And then we'll move on about questions about crank sizes, especially uh, with the guys in the chat. So I got this chart here. Let's make sure I got some audio and it looks like my audio is a little bit off. Let me turn on my audio. Like one channel is on. Thank you for being so patient, guys. Let's see here. I don't know where the right left channel is. There it is. All right, let's turn on the right channel. And then this is this is off the USA BMX website. All right, let me find this so I can actually read it because I cannot read my monitor here. Bear with me. Appreciate you guys. So let me bring this up for me to look at so I have a reference. 
And where do we go? Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, if you guys read this here, it's pretty funny. USA BMX says, a common mistake is to buy crank arms that are too long. Yeah, I agree. Arms that are too long make, make you swing your bike side to side, wag your tail. Well, yeah, probably, especially if you're like maybe 10 millimeters too long. Um, and then it says, ride a zigzag line instead of a straight line. Fair enough. I, I don't disagree. It's not, I, I'm not in strong agreement, but I don't disagree. Um, and then it says arms that are too short don't give you enough leg extension. And it's like, okay, that's where you lost me because it doesn't matter. You're going to get leg extension regardless, right? Like extension, leg extension is a hip, hip, knee and ankle joint. And once you apply force, as long as you're standing up, you're going to get leg extension. If you're seated, you may not get leg extension. Okay. But if you're standing up and sprinting, you're always going to get leg extension. So I think what they meant to say is that if arms are too short, you're not, get a, you're not gonna get enough leverage. I think that's the key there. They say, they say leg extension, therefore not enough power. You're not gonna get enough leverage, therefore you may be underpowered, right? Because anyone's for, for the most part is going to, they're gonna, kick the, they're gonna kick the crank over as hard as they can, okay? They're gonna, they're gonna kick it over as, as hard as they can. Now, let's talk about, like for me, I have, I have a 33 inch inseam and it says 180, okay? That's okay. I, I think I'm within, within the realm on that for me, all right? Now, the funny part is I've ran 185s. I grew up in, in the 90s where the, the era was, pretty much everyone was on 185s and there were also kids racing 190s. There was a couple kids racing 190s. Now, there was a kid named by the name of Kendall Burleson. He ran 190s with like a 47, 16. He was strong. He had, he had mad full pull, but he was also out of control with those cranks. He was a little bit on the shorter side. I think he was probably like 5'8", running 190s. Probably had an inseam of like, I don't know, 32. Okay. He's, you know, 190s are not even on this chart. Um, let's take a look at this other chart. Let's see, where am I? Let's bring this one up. Okay, here we go. Here's another chart. It says here, look, inseam. I have a 33 inch inseam. They don't even have anything for that. 30 to 32 inch inseam is 180 millimeter. Now I'm gonna give you this, this is where I'm at. I actually, in the later part of my BMX career, I ended up at a 177 and a half millimeter, I'm sorry, yeah, 177 and a half millimeter crank with a 33 inch inseam. 180s felt a little bit too long, 175s felt a little bit too short. It really did, especially with clipless pedals. So I just picked the middle of the road went 177 and a half, split the difference. And then I figured out my gearing from there. I figured out what gear can I use to op optimize my preferred crank length. Now we can get all technical. I started, you know, I started tinkering with Ren and decimal gearing to do a lot more fine tuning. I don't like the whole mess with the rear tire to figure out your rollout, right? I don't, I don't like that because you know, you start putting taller tires on, then you're messing with the bottom bracket height. You mess with the bottom bracket height, then you're kind of messing with, you're kind of messing with the leverage and power that you have coming out of the gate. Now, there was a guy that used to build my frames uh, when I used to race for a company called GT, he made me custom frames and, um, you know, awesome bike designer, Billy Griggs. He designs all the chase bikes. One of the things that he explained to me when it came to bottom bracket heights, and I know, forgive me, I'm, I'm running, I'm going off a, a tangent here. But one of the things he talked about when it came to uh, bottom bracket heights was if you were to have a higher bottom bracket, 
imagine this being, well, imagine this being a Yeti, Yeti bottle, or he, in this case, he, he explained like a WD-40 can that was sitting or a Coke can sitting on the table, okay? If I were to, if I were to grab it at the top, okay, let's say this is like a 12 inch off the high, off the ground high bottom bracket, it's easy, to, it's easy to rock back and forth. Now imagine the bike being straight on like this, okay? My, my pedals are here on the outside, all right? So when you pedal, you're, you're rocking the bike back and forth. It's gonna naturally rock back and forth regardless. And so if you were to lower the bottom bracket, it's gonna be harder, right? You're gonna have a little bit more, oh, I got water coming out. You got a little bit more stability in terms of the sway. And when you got more stability, the bike tends to go more forward than wasting this energy of side to side. Try that. If you guys have a bottle, when you guys are having dinner tonight, think about me, grab the top of the glass and do that. Notice how easy it is. Grab at the bottom, notice how easy it is. Now, I'm going off a tangent here because we're talking about crank lengths, but you know, that's one of the things, you know, and then we're talking about gearing, but that's one of the things that I think about when it comes to like tire sizes. I don't want to put on a bigger tire. It's gonna make it's gonna make the rear end taller and therefore it's gonna mess with the bottom bracket height. I don't mess with that. Um, all right, I think we're good. I think we're good here, guys. Quick intro about my thoughts when it comes to crank sizes. Now, the one thing I do want to leave you with here is I want you guys to think about optimizing the crank size for your ability to get out of the gate and compete to grab the whole shot and then being able to hold that lead all the way to the finish line, if not carry speed, okay? So grab the whole shot. Grabbing the whole shot is key. I don't want you to think about, well, you know, I, I don't really race that well and I race really well from behind and so I'm gonna gear my bike up to be, to have more track speed. Listen, I, I really think that's backwards thinking. I really think that everyone at the end of the day can improve their first straight and they can improve it through training. They can improve it by doing several different tricks, right? At the track and also away from the track and doing really simple things in an effort to improve your first straight. So always be thinking about gearing your bike to grab the whole shot because you never know. And then making sure that the crank length will allow you to get around the track efficiently and effortlessly. I really think that's important, okay? Um, another thing I wanted to touch on, oh, I totally forgot. One of the other things I want to talk, touch on was crank sizes for younger racers, okay? Um, want to talk about crank sizes for younger racers and older racers. How about that? And then we'll, we'll jump into the questions. A lot of people are jumping in. I see a lot of guys, a lot of names. Cage Moss, Robert Harris, um, Basic, JFT Performance, Andrew Burdett. Okay, so we're going to we're going to talk about younger racers under 10 and growing. Okay, number one, here, here are my thoughts. Their sprinting ability is not fully developed, so better off being shorter than longer when it comes to your crank length. All right. Kids should be working on high-speed sprints on rollers or slight downhill to develop the leg speed. When you're younger, when moving up in crank length, sometimes five millimeters is just right because they can adapt, all right? Younger riders can adapt easier. They really can. Um, and you can adjust and compensate with gear changes. We didn't really talk about that. I really wanted to focus on crank length. Um, you, can, you, can, you can compensate with gear changes, making it slightly harder, making the gear slightly harder to accommodate for the longer crank. Make sure the rider does more high-speed sprints to impose the demand so they can adapt to the longer crank length. Now, I think five millimeters makes sense because, you know, if, you're, if your kid's under 10, they're growing. And so maybe a two and a half millimeter crank length, eh, that might be okay, but that might be only good for like eight to 12 weeks. And then all of a sudden, you need to buy another set that are longer. Here's the thing. I wouldn't be if, I, you know, and this is, this is probably a bad tip for like local bike shops and vendors, I would just buy used cranks. You know, if you're 10 and under, buy used cranks. That's what I would do. Uh, tips for 
older racers looking to make crank changes, crank length changes, I recommend two and a half millimeter incremental changes, okay? And also you may not need to change the gear when you change the crank length. Try the gear you currently have on now before making, before making any fine tune adjust, fine tuning adjustments in gearing. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So for example, if I'm running a 4416 and I'm running 175 millimeter cranks and I wanna jump up to a two and a half millimeter increment going to 177 and a halves, I'm not gonna put on a 45. It's gonna to feel too hard for me. I'm older, so it's gonna be harder for me to adapt. Older, older riders are more kind of set in their ways. There's more muscle memory. It's hard for us to change. Younger riders are always, they're always changing in terms of size and, and their brains just ex expanding. And anyways, that's a whole nother topic, but it's easier for them to adapt to imposed demands. All right, hopefully that makes sense, guys. All right, so what questions do we have about crank sizing? What do we got? Jack Baker says he has to go. Um, Jason P, any consideration for crank size based on a big hill, five million? Okay, so you guys got a lot of good questions here. Um, <laughs> this is good stuff. All right, guys, so think about what questions you have about crank sizing and I'll address those here right after the break. Hey guys, I have a question. What would it do for you if you could enhance your power out of the gate, enhance your sprint speed down the first straight, enhance your skills, enhance your mental performance mind state? What would that do for your racing or your kids racing? If you're seeing the value of enhancing your BMX performance, consider joining the community of BMX Training Pro and get the same access my Olympic athletes have enjoyed, as well as thousands of BMXers all over the world. Some members use the access to improve their gate start techniques. Some also use the access to keep them motivated to train. And you'll find your reason when you gain access and join BMX Training Pro today. Stay focused, get ready now. For real, get ready now. Nitro with the nice flow. Stay focused, get ready now. For real, get ready now. Let's go. Stay focused, in the heat come. Concentrate to the sound of the beat drum. Start it up, take it back now. Check, check it out. This is how it's going down. All right, looking at the first question here of the day. And of course, we're on a super chat. So if you guys want to donate money, any any nomination would be awesome. It's going to help with production, editing, equipment, all kinds of stuff. I'm not a one-man show over here. I have people helping me and there's definitely expense to do this stuff. So anything you guys want to provide, um, man, I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity for that. I'm also grateful for the opportunity uh, to be your coach. So we have a comment here right off the hop. Andrew Burdett. Andrew Burdett says he's 5'8", using 180. Just hearing that makes me want to rethink everything. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree. You know, at 5'8", like I'm 5'10", and I like 177 and a halves. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. Um... What else do we got here? We have some other, what other questions do we have? David Blur from Florida. He says, I ruined my Haro with a 195 rear tire switch back to stock size 175 and the whole bike got better and everything. Yeah, because you know, 195 versus 175, you basically effectively change the center of gravity by lowering the bottom bracket just through just through a simple tire change has a really big influence. And I see another question you also have too, Dave. Uh, I'm going to get to that here in a minute. Um, <laughs> Michael Head, he has a great question. I didn't even think about this. Uh, my, my first answer to this one, Michael Head said, just tuned in. Did you already cover class versus cruiser? especially for eight to 11 year olds just getting into cruiser. Man, that's very specific. No, I, in fact, I didn't cover any bike size. I really just covered short cranks versus long cranks and trying to optimize uh, the crank length based upon 
the parameters and and pros and cons that I gave for each one. So you have to you're gonna have to watch this back. Um, now I will say this in terms of class versus cruiser, same crank length. There's there's no really there's really no reason to to mess with the crank length sizes because oh a cruiser you know there's a more inertia to overcome because of because the wheel size is bigger. So therefore we should put you know a longer crank on. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I would try to get the gearing as identical as you can um, straight up. I, I wouldn't mess I wouldn't mess with different crank lengths for, for either bike. All right, looks like there, here's a question I want to answer right off the hop. David Blur says, does crank length work roughly the same as gearing, whereas a longer crank might help with initial acceleration, but a shorter length would allow a faster spin and increase top speeds? Yes, absolutely, totally. You're spot on, David. And, and that was one thing that we did talk about in terms of the pros and cons. And I didn't want to get gearing into the mix because really at the end of the day, it's all about optimizing the crank length, in my opinion, and then figuring out your gearing to accommodate your preferred crank length. As opposed to like, oh, that's my preferred gear. Let's figure out the crank length that's going to complement that. Now, you could do it like that. I, I wouldn't say that's absolutely... Um, wrong and, and not 100% right. It's just not my preference. Okay. Um, now, I also think that once you do figure out your crank length, you could totally fine tune the gearing from there. Okay. And of course, if you're younger and you're getting stronger and you're growing, then both things are going to be changing potentially simultaneously. Crank length will get longer and the gearing will get taller, okay? As you get stronger, you're able to apply more force. You're able to apply, uh, you're going to be able to develop a better spin, right? Through training. Okay, so uh, my boy Basic BMX, I think we already answered this question, but we'll just, just put them up on the screen there. Basic says, do you think you should be running the same length cranks on both bikes. Yes. David Blur says, sorry, I tuned in late. I jumped in while you were talking about tire sizes. I'll have to go back and watch the beginning after the stream. No worries, David. It, it's all good, man. Um, yeah, we, we talked about uh, crank lengths, pros and cons. So here we go. Andrew Burdett says, Talking about attacking the whole track makes sense. I usually use crank and sprocket size along with power to take first and second straight, but spinning is key now, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what spinning means to you, but at the end of the day, we, we, we've, we've addressed this time and time again. BMXers are sprinters. You know, you always hear about people are like, oh, he's a, ma you know, parents talking about other younger kids on the track. He's a masher. He's a spinner whatever you guys are sprinters you guys are going all out and i really don't think that there's a big big discrepancy between two kids on the same gate that are the same age perhaps different sizes perhaps different gear gear sizes i don't really think there's a whole lot of difference in terms of pedal cadences i, I really don't think salty scout is he's talking about flexibility of cranks oh let's see here Salty Scouts talking about what are your thoughts on stiffer cranks versus more forgiving cranks in terms of flex? You know, that's a tough one. I don't even know if manufacturers even offer that kind of data. Hey, like, hey, our crank flexes this much or our crank is this stiff. I mean, I really think that's more of a kinesthetic, subjective interpretation, correct? I've ran, for me personally, I've ran chromoly cranks. I've ran Shimano DXR aluminum cranks. I've ran the box cranks. I didn't, and also boss cranks, <laughs> right? So two types of 4130 chromoly cranks. And then of course, um, two different types of aluminum cranks. Uh, one made by Shimano, really, really stout built in two piece crank with a really nice big solid spindle. And, and then of course, box is, is more or less the same thing. And honestly, 
it's hard for me to even tell any any flex. Like if you're if you're thinking like back in the '80s and the '90s, where well, even today, right? The the little kids they have the square they have the square taper spindle, and those tend to flex. And so if you're talking about say a 12 year old going into 13, 14, and they're developing more testosterone and they're growing and they're getting stronger, yeah, at some point they're going to have to go to what we call standard parts. Right, what the pros are running and get off the, the square taper. If that's what you're talking about, yes, forgive me. I sometimes I think through the through the eyes of how I raced when I was a pro, but I also raced when I was eight years old to you know, all the way through those tough years of 11, 12, 13 years old. So, um, Derek says, Great stuff tonight, Coach G. Yeah, man. Um, let's see here. You need to see a picture of David's frame. Um, what other questions do we have as it pertains? I'm going to go to the top of the feed. You know, here we go. Let's see here. We have a couple, uh, like Thunder Midget says he's 5'4". He, he's 190 pounds. He runs 170. So it'd be interesting to take a look at his chart and see where he falls. Just for fun. So he's 5'4". Okay, he didn't give me his inseam. Okay, Salty Scout says he has a 32-inch in inseam and he runs 170. So where are we at with that? Yeah. Well, according, according to this yellow chart, he's fine. Let's take a look at the chart on USA BMX's website. Sorry, I have to, go, I have to use my monitor on this. So he said, just for fun. Um, Salty Scout, where is it? 32-inch inseam. Yeah, the ABA, the USA BMX one's off. He 32 inch inseam says you should be running 175s to 180s. Bah, that's funny. Um, questions about crank sizes. A hey, line boy, I had to cut off Call of Duty to hear this. All right, what else do we got? Let's get to work here. Uh, Jack Baker, is he in the gym? Jack, what's your inseam, man? 175s and he's six foot tall. Here's a comment. Basic BMX. It's going to be LAD out of NorCal. I'm noticing a lot of riders, older riders, Going shorter crank lengths to help get more revolutions per lap and easier to pedal manual. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. More pedal revolutions. Actually, the longer the crank, the more pedal revolutions you're probably going to have. And to be honest with you, your revolutions are going to be based on the gearing. Straight up. Because check it out. Regardless... 15 feet is 15 feet on, on an average gearing of 44, 16, give or take a quarter inch, a half inch, an inch. It's 15 feet, right? So how many more pedals are you going to get to the first jump if your average first jump from the gate to the first jump is 75 feet at five cranks? Is going shorter cranks going to give you more pedal strokes? Think about it. Ain't going to happen. There is no influence of how many cranks, revolutions that you're going to get. You guys, I, 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 I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you right now, you're, you're probably going to be within one half pedal stroke, give or take, on a, five, on a five millimeter change from start all the way to the finish line. So LAD, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to say no. I think what you're trying to say I, I will tell you this, you do feel like you do feel like you can actually get more out of your pedal stroke because the crank is shorter. Absolutely. Especially from the first turn all the way to the last turn, you're going to feel like you have more resistance. You don't feel like you're chopping out. But in terms of like more revolutions, no, that, that's, that's not the case, man. Um, Robert Cordoza, what about 177? How much difference is 180? Uh, what do you mean by that? Give us give us more context besides the obvious of, of three millimeter, or in this case, 
two and a half millimeter. I, I want to know what your model of the world is, Robert. He says, what about 177? Well, how much of a difference is 180? Now, if you're going to ask me, like, what's the difference? Like, what's the kinesthetic feel? It's a lot. It really is. I, I notice a big difference every time. Especially like 175 to going to 175. I'm sorry, 175 going to 177 and a half. So give me more context. What's the difference? What do you mean? Is it a feel? Is it, you know, in terms of, you know, I, I've come out of the gate with longer cranks and I feel like I'm missing my second pedal stroke. It's just not there. I'm like too far ahead of it. It's more of a timing thing. Okay, here we go. J Jason P has a good one. This is a great question here. Jason, Jason P has a question. Any consideration for crank size based on hill size, say a five millimeter hill versus a small hill? Okay, like how small are you talking? A five millimeter, a five meter hill. Let me, did I say that wrong? A five meter hill, five meter hill. I'm having a hard, that sounds weird to me. I got an echo in my head. Any consideration for crank size based on hill size, say a five meter hill versus a small hill? I would say this, I would not change your cranks based on hill size, absolutely not. I would change your gearing though, okay? And I have done that before. A five meter hill, listen, it's all about getting out in front of the competition as soon as the gate drops. So unless you're doing a time trial, I would not go with a shorter crank or a harder gill, a harder gear. I would not I would not go to a shorter crank or a harder gear if the if the hill is taller. The race is still all about getting out front of the guy to the left and right of you. Getting ahead, getting ahead by just one handlebar grip and cutting them off. <laughs> all right. I think that's what you're trying to come up with. I, I, I know what you're saying, right? Like, oh, the five meter hill is taller and I'm going to be wound out by, by the time I get to the bottom. Then the thing is, is that you're going to need to train for that, Jason. You're going to need to do steep downhill, stand start, or even jump, jump sprints working on that area of winding out the gear. The gear is going to wind out faster for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if the gear is going to wind out faster, you're going to need to train for that. One way you could train for that, you could actually lower the gear by a tooth and training yourself to wind out really quickly. And then, of course, you want to make sure you put your race gear back on. All right, let's keep moving on. It looks like we're having more comments. <laughs> Box crusher. Nice one. Box Crusher says, cutting off people seems to be the only strategy now. Man, that's all it ever was, right? Shut down the competition. Beat them out of the gate. Get them out, get them out of the equation and keep attacking. Get ahead of the competition and grab that whole shot. That's it, right? UFC, Octagon, it's all about the tap out. You know, forget the knockout, get the tap out. Jason P said I explained that well. Thank you. Hey, I, I try my best. Sometimes I, you know, sometimes I don't explain things well, but sometimes I get lucky. So I'm super grateful. Um, okay, Robert Cordoza. Let's come back to Robert. Our good friend Robert. Racing road bikes, I tend to use 175s, but I find that I get more pull out of the gate with 177s, and I have a little bit of a chop. A, a, I have a little bit more of a choppier stroke with the 180s. Yeah, um, one thing I want to note for you older guys that are like myself who ride road, stick with road crank sizes, right? Don't try to have, don't try to match your BMX crank size with your road bike or your mountain bike. BMX is super, super high niche specific in terms of overcoming inertia, getting on top of the pedal stroke from a dead start, and trying to accelerate as fast as you can. Road biking is a way different animal. Um, now I'll tell you this, road bikes, I like 170s, 
BMX bikes, I like 177 and a halves, seven and a half millimeter difference. No way in heck could I run 177 and a halves on a road bike. In fact, I just got a brand new bike, a Canyon, and it came equipped with 172s, and I'm looking for some 170s to put on it because the ones, that two and a half millimeter feels really long to me, even when I'm sitting down. It's crazy. I'm super sensitive. Uh, Jason P with a super chat. Thank you very much. Jason P, cha-ching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, man. We really appreciate you. Uh, man, you always show up. Shane and Zai from Hawaii. He says, oh, and what's your thoughts on decimal gearing? Just trying out 42.7 instead of 43. Yeah, I love decimal gearing. Super fan. Um, I'm running a 44.1 right now with 177 and a halves, and I absolutely love it. It got me a medal at the World Championships the last time I raced my bicycle. Shout out to Renan and George Costa on the concept of, of decimal gearing. Um, he says he's trying out the 42.7 instead of a 43. Yeah, so you're on the lower end of that 43. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I, I, I love it for fine tuning, especially if you have figured out your optimal and preferred crank size. Shane says, oh, and your new road bike is fire, by the way. Thank you very much. I I love it, man. The, the, the Canyon Arrow Road CFR, it is fire, man. It's super fast, super light. Um, I'm looking forward to taking it out tomorrow on the Wednesday World Championship ride. It's a flat ground ride, really fast. My gearing is really crazy. It's a 50-37 uh, with a, uh, it's a 12-speed, SRAM 12-speed, 50 uh, 50, 10, 10 cog in the back, 50 up front. It's the equivalent if you were to run an 11, like standard Shimano 11 speed, uh, it would be the equivalent of running a 50, 55 tooth chain ring on, on the front, which is crazy. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting on that. Edwin Alvarez says, hey coach, what did I miss so far? Man, you missed a lot, bro. What do you, what do you wanna know? You missed a lot. Someone, someone get them updated. <laughs> What other questions do we have, guys? Coming up on the 45 minute mark, I can go for about another 10 minutes. That means realistically about three more questions. So top three questions are gonna get answered right off the board. Uh, let me scan through and see if there's any other questions. Um, Andrew Burdett, did, did I make this comment? Talk about tra attacking the whole track makes sense. I like that comment. That was a really good one. So let's bring that up while you guys come up with awesome, awesome questions questions for me uh whoops i got the wrong one andrew burdett says talking about attacking the whole track makes sense i usually use crank and sprocket size along with power to take first and second straight okay yeah i did address that sorry that i'm it's a sign i'm getting older um what other questions we have Andrew Burdett, let's go back to him. Andrew says, okay, so he's got a two-part question. Short with power and I like 180 millimeter with 4516, why should I change? I don't know, you tell me. Should you change? If it's fine, how tall are you? What's your inseam? Andrew, we'll come back to you. Jack Baker, I, I saw you before, 175s, inseam 32, and my gear is 44. Hey, if it's working for you, great. <laughs> Darren Rossi wants that. <laughs> oh, we're gonna add, oh, Darren, you're gonna get me, you're gonna get me in trouble uh, here. We're, we're, this is a BMX channel. Darren says, he has a comment, disc or padded brakes, what's the best like advantages and disadvantages? Okay, for BMX or road? You know, it's funny, I have not, I've never had a disc brake bike until I got my Canyon Aero Road. I've been on padded brakes for the longest time and there seems to be a trend of disc brakes entering the BMX world. And look, man, if you have to use your brakes in BMX, you're in trouble. Um, <laughs> unless of course you're looping out, even then you're kind of in trouble, you need to tap it. But, you know, there's a couple of riders that I coach, they like the disc brake. Um, you know, maybe because they can come to a stop at the finish line faster. I don't know. But honestly, if you're using brakes and BMX, you can forget about it, right? 
That's my comment. You can forget about it. Andrew Burdett, 30 inch inseam, 5'8". I think you're fine, man. Like at the end of the day, if you like 180s, now here's the thing when it comes to crank size. Andrew Burdett says, He's short with power and he likes 180s with a 4516. Why should I change? And he also says, oh, did I get that right? He has, a, he's 5'8 with a 30 inch inseam. Okay, well, you know, according to USA BMX, <laughs> 30 inch inseam, it says here 170s to 175s. I don't know. According to this other chart here, 30 inch inseam, it says you should be on 180s. You know, I don't know. You know, I, I think 45, I think a 4516 is pretty stout of a gear. If you're strong enough to get on top of that gear, then great, right? And you're comfortable with your 180s, awesome. Perhaps you don't need to change your cranks. You've already adapted. I, th I think you're totally fine. I really do. Now, if you wanted to tinker, right? You want to tinker, maybe you could try 177 and a halves. Find someone that has some 177 and a halves. If I had an extra pair, I would loan it to you. You could, you could try a shorter crank and see if you could get into your second, third pedal. Now, that's something that we haven't addressed. If you, we talked about acceleration, but also, if you have a really long crank, I feel like there's a delay in the second half crank coming out of the gate, your second pedal, okay? So that's something that you may need to consider. He says he feels stable. Yeah, then, dude, you're good. Steve Yeager says, six foot one, 180 millimeter, tried and true. Yeah. See, that's, that's what's crazy. We have a guy in here who's 5'8 and six foot one, and they both like 180 millimeter. It totally works for them. That's what's so crazy, right? The charts are, are only recommendations and generalizations. I really think at the end of the day, it's all about finding what's best for you, optimizing yourself, getting out of the gate, accelerating to the first jump, getting ahead of the competition and grabbing the whole shot. That's the key. After that, everything else is training, right? After that, everything else is gear optimization. But I think crank length optimization is key. You don't want to, you don't want too short of a crank to where you can't get out of the gate and you're behind the second pedal and you don't want too long of a crank to where your second half crank and your second pedal is delayed. And also you don't want too long of a crank if you're having a hard time pedaling around the rest of the track and you're getting gassed at the end of the track. Box Crusher. Oh, and we got another super chat from David Blauer. Cha-ching. Let's see here. Where are you at? Where is it? There it is. Thank you, David. We really appreciate the support, man. You're always coming through with great questions and uh, really appreciate you being part of the community. Super grateful, man. Thank you very much. Jeb Domingo says, I'm too new to know what what is right for me? Um, Edwin Alvarez, 165 for second pedal, and it didn't work. Okay, hold on. Let's get that one up. And then there's another one I like to box crusher, talking about his daughter, so we'll get to that. Edwin Alvarez, I tried 165 millimeters for second pedal optimization, and it didn't work any better. Got 30 days to get used to 175. That's a big jump, 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters is a huge jump. So you tried 165s from what? I'm curious. Box Crusher, let's see if this... Having fun here. Box Crusher has a comment. He says, he has his daughter on a... He has his 14X daughter on 175 millimeter cranks. She's 5'7 with 32 inch inseam. Sounds just about right for, for me. Uh, stepping her up from 170, millimeter really improved her gait. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious, did you change the gear? Did you change the gear? Edwin Alvarez came back, says he's he was at 170, he went down the 165s and he jumped up the 175s. Cool, let us know how it goes. Luke Mitchell. 
I love new BMXers. Luke Mitchell, welcome to the BMX community. Welcome to the BMX community, Luke. Uh, he says here, I'm an avid BMX. I'm a meth. See, and now my mind's just deleting for BMX. He says, I'm an avid mountain biker and I'm really thinking about hitting the track with my son. I'm five foot seven with a 29 inch inseam. I run 165 on all my bikes, road, gravel, and mountain bike. Where should I start on a cruiser? I would definitely start, I would definitely start with 170s, right? But BMX, generally speaking, is a longer crank sport because it's all about overcoming inertia from a stand start. So we're all about sprinting out of the blocks and getting and racing up front right away. So a longer crank will help you with that. Um, but if you're used to running 165s, like I race road and I ride road a lot. I put in about eight hours a week on road. I run, for example, I run 170s. And on my BMX bike, I run 177 and a halves. And I will tell you this, I've ran up to 185s and I've also ran 182s on flat pedals for a long time racing pro back in the 90s. Um, and still today, I like 170s um, on my road bike. So I would definitely start with 170s. If you're, if you're 165s, if you're running 165s on all your bikes, road, mountain bike, gravel, then I would probably say at least five millimeters longer for your BMX bike, especially if you're starting out. Give it a try, let me know how it goes. Thank you so much and welcome. We love the new guys, we love the new guys. Maria says, be aware that 175 tires of different brands might have almost a one tooth difference. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> we're not gonna get into that. Yes, yeah, Steve Latchford says, uh, it's all, it's, it's about what you find to feel the most comfortable. Absolutely. He said he had a tough time figuring out what gearing for my cruiser after I switched from my 20 inch, I'm running 175 and 41, like this thing keeps moving when I read my gates feel great. Um, I feel I'm not getting gassed. I'm five, eight. Perfect. Absolutely. Andrew Burdett, $10 super chat. Cha-ching. Thank you very much. And he has a comment. Keep it up, watch all your stuff. I'm from the NBL times and now my kids race. Dude, isn't that how it is? Yeah, NBL. Watch the gate, beep, 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 beep. Good stuff, I love the NBL. Oh man, so many, when I think of the NBL, of course I think of like South Park, Louisville, Classic. I, I think of all the Florida tracks, those were all NBL tracks, all of them. <laughs> New wig cut. Uh, dude, I, LAD, I did not get a new haircut. I just, I, I told my barber to stay home. He got, he was getting expensive and I'm like, look, I'm gonna grow it out. And my girl was like, I'm tired of the military cut. So I'm, I'm growing my hair out. Was, all I did was just combed it to the side and this is, that's how it rolled. Uh, Jeb Domingo says, I'm 5'11", riding cruiser, 180 millimeter, 30, 31 inch inseam. Yeah, cool. Waterford, Michigan. Yes, absolutely. Home of the uh, 1994 World Championships. And then we have another comment. Hey, let's bring this up. I think this is interesting. I don't know if you race BMX or not, but thanks for chiming in. He says, in BMX, you have one gear, so you can't use gears to gain mechanical advantage. A little longer is better. A longer crank. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Unless you have a three-speed bike, right? I've raced Brian Lopes with a three-speed. Um, however, it didn't really work out too well for him. And I won the, he showed up to the uh, ABA Grands. Of course, it's known as USA BMX Grands. He showed up to the ABA Grands with a, with a three-speed. No, it was a two-speed. No, it was a three-speed. A three-speed mongoose. And I beat him in the final in pro. Yeah, it didn't work out. It didn't give him a mechanical advantage either. <laughs> I had to bring that up because I'm going to have to post that. Um Oh, yeah, forgive me. You race BMX in Australia. Forgive me, man. Just forgive me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that's that's an, inter that's, that's an interesting take. A little longer is better. I tend to think that a little shorter is better. Um, but I don't disagree with you. A little longer is better as long as if you're training to... Train that ceiling of your top end leg speed down the first straight and, and being able to be fit 
with longer cranks going around the track. If you could do that, you can, you can impose that stimulus and adapt to that demand, then yeah, I agree with you. Longer is better. BMX is all about leverage. It's all about getting on top of the gear. It's all about coming, overcoming inertia. Hello from down under. What time is it over there? I actually have a clock for Australia. What is it? 640, 650? Is it 650? 650 in the morning in Australia right now. I have some clients from Australia. Yes, very good point. Longer to the point where you could still spin it. Yeah, we yeah, we we talked about that earlier. Thank you for your input, man. That's that's crazy. Um, that's great. T Rob, man, I'm having a lot of fun with you guys, man. You guys are super interactive today. Uh, looks like we're going 15 minutes longer than normal. T Rom, T Rom, a oh, 1:50 p.m. Oh yeah, you're right. For some reason, I was looking at the ing. I was looking at a different clock. Yeah, it's 1:50, right? I, I could prove that. Hold on, let me show you. It's been a while since I've learned how to read a clock, but. Pretty sure that says 150. That's my Australia clock to ensure I know uh, what time it is. Maybe I should probably put Australia here. All right, guys, let's keep moving. Thought that was funny. Um, Luke Mitchell says, again, I'm new to BMX. Track cyclists, fixed gear tend to run shorter for cadence. Yeah, absolutely. And also, also they run shorter cranks, so they do not hit the bank, right? When you're going up and down the bank, yeah, track. I'm running. I have a track bike. I'm running 165s. I'm not messing around. Although I tell you this much, there was a guy by the name of Terry Tanette, and he put 180s on a track bike. Luckily, we were in, in it, we were at the uh, local velodrome here in San Diego. We were part of a uh, uh, a USA Cycling track BMX talent identification camp. So what we did was. We went up to Colorado Springs. They invited like 12 of us. It was kind of a making the band type deal where we, they threw us through all these different all these different tests. Um, strength test, like squat, uh, jump, jump test to figure out our vertical. And then we went out on the track and they were trying to identify uh, someone that can actually uh, race like Jamie Staff who crossed over from BMX and helped uh, British Cycling in, in the Olympic sprint, which is three laps, three riders. And the first guy does a 19 second all out sprint. Jamie Staff got a gold medal in the Olympics back in 2008 doing that. And they were trying to find BMXers that could take over that number one starting position. And like out of 12 of us, there was only three of us that were invited. I made the cut and then we went down to San Diego and my boy, Terry Tanette put 180 millimeter profile cranks on his track bike to try to gain a, a, a mechanical advantage uh, overcoming a stand start because doing a stand start on a track bike with a large 92 inch gear as opposed to like a 55 inch gear on a BMX bike with shorter cranks, super hard. It'll expose what kind of strength you got. Super, super hard, much respect. I, I didn't really care for doing it because it just took so much energy and it blew out my central nervous system. And I would want to throw up after doing a 19 second all out sprint from a stand start with a really, really, really hard gear. Um, anyways, let's go to thoughts on Barry Nobles. Thoughts on Barry Nobles, man, what a question as it pertains to figuring out our crank sizes. Barry Nobles is awesome, man. It, He's having a, 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 a huge second win to his career entering into the vet pro class and he's winning a lot. And, you know, he's an influencer, right? He has a large audience and he's got all the best sponsors. Um, I think he's a great bike handler. I remember from the NBL days when he was racing with Claiborne, the one thing I've noticed and I've always admired about Barry was he was always a, far, a, a really, really strong, he was always a strong finisher um, especially in the second half of the track, I always notice him really, really blazing down the first, sorry, always really, really blazing down the last straight. And I noticed over the last weekend of his racing over in Oldsmar on day one, he was in third place. And then he made a high-low pass down 
um, uh, uh, he made a high low pass in the last turn and then passed the guy in second all the way to the finish line. Or I think he did a two for one. I don't remember. My memory doesn't serve me well on that because there's, I watched so many races. But anyways, he rode really strong and finished strong. Barry is a, is a great bike handler. Another comment from Salty Scout. <laughs> okay, let's see. Chris Warren. Chris Warren says they sure didn't make it seem to be a big deal about crank lengths in the 80s and early 90s as they are now getting back into it over the last couple of years. Okay, so I think I'm out of the loop on that conversation. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, Edwin Alvarez, he always comes in with some great questions. Edwin has a question. What problems can you run into running 175s on the 20 inch and 170s on the cruiser? Ooh, man, that's crazy. You know, that's a big drastic jump, right? Because here's the thing. Let's talk about overcoming inertia, right? Which is overcoming dead, dead weight, right? Overcoming inertia means how much energy you need to expend to overcome and move an object that's not moving. And so as it pertains to a 20 inch wheel versus a 24 inch wheel, you have to overcome more inertia on the cruiser. So the funny thing is you're totally under, under leverage using 170s on the cruiser versus using 175s on your 20 inch. I would also, I would probably consider swapping the cranks out. Put the 175s on the cruiser and the 170 on the 20 inch and give that a try. That's the problems that you can run into running a five millimeter difference between the 20 inch and the cruiser and being five millimeters shorter on the cruiser. I would think in my mind running longer on the cruiser. Or just get 175s and put them on the cruiser. Solves, solves the problem, right? Solves the problem. Get 175s, put them on the cruiser, Edwin. That's what I would do. Seriously. Robert, I don't know about that. Um, I tell you what, I'm not really well versed when it comes to chains and half links and stuff like that. Might have to get my boy Nick Long on that one. He used to play with that. I've always kept it simple. I don't mess with chain links. Uh, and I always make it sure that I use the, the stock chain link pin. Days Rock says, thank you for the show, coach. Really appreciate the support. Man, I really, I really appreciate the support um, of you guys. More importantly, you guys make the difference. Got like 44, 45 concurrent viewers. That's pretty good. Um, you know, I mean, BMX is a super hyper niche sport. And uh, man, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'll go back and forth with you guys for another two or three minutes and then we got to go. Because all of a sudden we were talking about like Nick's, you know, head tat. <laughs> How about Nick's new head tat? Man, I don't know how expensive that is, and I can't imagine, can't imagine the pain he had to go through for that. And then he's gonna grow his hair out, right? Nick's Nick's got great hair, so you know, I think that's that's a that's a ballsy move, right? Edwin Alvarez, as always, thank you so much for the super chat, man. I'm grateful for your questions, man. You really come up with good questions. I'm I'm serious. Uh let's see here. Um T Rom, this is great. T-Rom, I stopped using my SE quad angle with 180 millimeter cranks for box sprints because I seem to be experiencing knee pain where I was having that trouble on my Supercross with 175s. I love how you talked about the about the bikes. Um, yeah, you know, longer cranks versus one, you know, longer cranks versus shorter cranks. If you're feeling knee pain, yeah, you know, go with shorter, go with what feels better. You know, I'm, I'm not going to jump into the science of a longer crank, but... You know, 175s for me, uh, longer cranks versus a shorter crank for me, I feel it in the lower back. 
it's really weird. I, I feel it in the lower lower back. I can't speak on on knee pain. I've not experienced that with with cranks. Man, guys, awesome show. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for the super chat money. We appreciate the support. We're going we're gonna to put that to good use. Uh, use it for more resources. Um, oh, Salty Scout. There's one more I want wanted to address here before we take off. This will be the last question of the night. Let me Let me see if I can find it here. Salty Scout asked, shorter versus longer for flats versus clips? Dude, that's a great question. I actually have a lot to say about that. Let me see if I can find it here on my computer. Thank you so much for uh, for waiting on waiting for me on this, guys. You guys are awesome. Here we go. This is the one. Salty Scout. Shorter versus longer cranks for flats versus clips. Dude, great question. I could totally give you guys a lot of insight on this. Back in 19, no, back in 2000, that was the year where in the beginning of the year, most pros were racing on flat pedals. And then come like April, four months into the season, boom, all the pros were on all the pros were on clipless pedals. And when they went on clipless pedals, everyone also went shorter in crank length. It was crazy. Everyone that was on flat pedals for the most part were running things like 182 millimeter and 185. That was just the norm. That was the norm back then. Don't, don't ask why, that was the norm. When everyone went clipped in, everyone felt like the crank is longer. Well, the crank wasn't longer you were clipped in. The gear actually felt easier, but no one wanted to change their gear. So what did everyone do? They compensated by shortening the crank. They went from 185s to 180s. They went from 182s to 180s, or they went from 182s to 177s. And I did the same thing. I was running 182s, and it felt like the crank was really long. And that was because we were clipped in. And when we're clipped in, what I later found out through thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking was that we're not really using supporting muscles when we're pedaling using clipless pedals, supporting muscles such as inner outer thigh, adductor, abductor. Okay. You could take those questions. You could take those, take those questions. You could take those muscles out of the equation when it comes to pedaling in this straightforward motion. Okay. And so, autonomically, we didn't have to use these supporting muscles to keep our pedals, keep our feet on the pedals when we were pedaling with flat pedals, right? That's the thing. When you put on flat pedals, you have to use that extra effort to keep your foot on the pedal, okay? Up and down and also side to side. With clipless pedals, you know that you're not coming off, you're not coming off the pedal. Therefore, you could totally think about going up and down. And it made our cranks and our gear sizes feel easier. It really did. It felt like you were running a longer crank. It was the weirdest thing. But being that we didn't really want to change our cranks, we, I'm sorry, being that we didn't want to change our gears, we, trained, we changed our cranks. And then that became the new norm. True story, that became the new norm because after we started shortening our cranks, the bike designer at GT Bicycles, who's now the bike designer today at Chase Bicycles, decided to go aggressive with lowering the bike, lowering the center of gravity, <coughs> because all of a sudden, there wasn't a market for 185 millimeter cranks. The longest crank that anyone that was running back then was now 180 millimeter. The future was starting to change. It started to shift. So what had happened was, Billy said, <coughs> well, no one's running 185s now. Everyone's running 180s or 175s. We're going to lower that bottom bracket. We're going to go from a 12-inch high bottom bracket to 11 and a half. We're going to go super aggressive. 
And once he was able to do that, it felt like the bike was able to accelerate even faster because there was less sway side to side. Again, we talked about it earlier, the concept that Billy, my bike designer at GT, who's now the bike designer at Chase, he said, listen, here's the concept of bottom bracket heights. If you grab a can at the top and it's sitting on a table and you go side to side, you have a lot of leverage. It's easy for that bike to go side to side. If you were to lower the bottom bracket, grab the, the can at you know, mid or, or lower and go side to side, you'll notice that it's really, really stiff. It's hard to go side to side. So therefore you're spending a lot more energy going forward. Anyways, thank you very much for that. I, I wanted to share that. That was very anecdotal, but that was the experience of, anyways, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, when, when it comes to <clears throat> shorter versus longer for flats versus clips, I would say today you don't need to do that because no, you don't have the problem of like running 185 millimeter cranks. I would just change the gear and I would do it incrementally because today, I'm sorry, I would, yeah, I would do it incrementally with like Ren and decimal gearing. For example, if you're on flat pedals and the gear feels hard and you're running a 44, well then run a 40, a 43.9 or a 43.8, okay, which is actually still technically 44 teeth but the diameter is smaller, okay? If you go back to your clips, then you can fine tune and go maybe a little bit harder, but I wouldn't do like a full tooth harder. That's a big difference. It's a big, big, big change in BMX. All right, guys, thank you very much. Man, awesome stuff. A lot of donations tonight. I wanna to give a shout out to Edwin Alvarez, Andrew Burdett, David Bloor, Jason P. We appreciate your donations for the super chat. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Great content tonight, Box Crusher says. Thanks from Chile. We have a, a guy from Australia. We had someone else from, um, I think it was Ecuador, somewhere in South America. Listen, you know, BMX is just not in America. It's a worldwide sport. It is awesome. And I am super grateful to have, man, all these different continents coming together on one channel. I am super grateful. Super, super grateful that we can hang out. David Blur with another $10, man, um, says, great stream tonight. You can't put a price on the experience and knowledge you share with us. You know, I've been telling, I was telling one of my friends today, it's like, I was like, yeah, I do this live show every week. I go live, I go live on either Monday, Tuesday at 5.30 and it's like, it's a live clinic, right? Like I don't really do clinics. I don't travel like Nick Long does, but every Tuesday night, you guys know that you're having the clinic. We're gonna take it to another level when it comes to coaching. I've been thinking about a, a coaching program where it's kind of like everyone's in the same program and I meet up with you guys a couple times a month and we interact like this and I'm gonna give you guys a training plan. I, I, I'm really, I just really thought about this uh, yesterday. I'm trying to figure some stuff out. And uh, man, it would be great for a lot of you guys. I think a lot of you guys would be great candidates for that. It'd be a low barrier entry. It wouldn't be a high ticket item like me, you know, like my Olympic fee. It would just be too much. But I want to be able to give you guys um, more access to me and I want to be able to help you guys more in a personalized manner rather than just going back and forth um, trying to mind read words, right? I want to be able to interact with you guys and give you guys uh, hands on. So be on the lookout for that. I'm, I'm going to um, brainstorm that and whip that up and, you know, I'll send an email out to you guys. Brad Fry with another $10 donation. Man, if I stay on, you guys are gonna keep donating. I should, you guys are trying to get me to stay, but listen, I gotta eat. I can hear my dog barking, <laughs> literally, my puppy. Um, T-Rom says, please, please be sure to show your support by at least hitting the thumbs up button. It's free. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys. Um, Box Crusher says, lower the BB. Uh, Brad Fry says, okay, well, let's see. Brad, Brad Fry has a question. Uh, he gave a donation, so we got we to gotta address this. Not on topic, but we really like your spinner training video. <laughs> Which one? Is that the one on, on the YouTube channel? Please make more great training tool to keep my daughter engaged on her spinner. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Uh, there is a, um, if you have your daughter, this is not available as a DVD, but it's available on at the store at BMX Training. Store.bmxtraining.com. Killer Speed, that's a great workout for your daughter. 
Um, there's more of that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of body weight exercises. And of course you can integrate the bike on your rollers or your, or like you said, a uh, spinner. Brad Fry said, yes, on the YouTube channel. Okay, you're talking about the, uh, the, the pandemic, the pandemic uh, training video that we did. Yeah, there's more versions of that on this DVD. So go get that at, uh, at the store store.bmxtraining.com Brad Fry thank you very much what else do we got okay I think that's it guys again um, have a great week uh, my message would be listen um, keep working hard keep showing up and keep working hard and showing up when no one is looking more importantly okay keep putting in the work the work is not that hard to do you only need to put in about an hour a day Work on your sprints, work on your gates, work on your strength training, whether you're an older rider or a younger rider, keep working hard, okay? That's my message. You guys keep bringing that energy too. Keep bringing the positive vibe um, like you guys are now. Be that at the track. Keep, keep helping out other riders. That's my message to you guys. Keep helping the other riders at the track uh, the way I'm helping you guys and our sport's gonna keep growing. BMX is, is such an awesome sport been in it since I was, I've been in it for 41 years. And uh, man, it, it, it just keeps, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And so um, the only way that it can work is if we keep giving back, all of us. Bobby Warren, Jason P, Luke, t Rom, uh, everyone says thumbs up. You guys have a wonderful wonderful week. Till next time, t Rom says, I am out. You guys have a great night or a great morning, wherever you're at.